Welcome back everyone to some more F1 on my team and today we're here for round number three of season number three for the Spanish Grand Prix. So first of all, first order of business, if you haven't seen the previous episode at China, then go check it out. I'll leave a link up in the top right. The response was a bit meh, so if you haven't seen it, I do recommend watching it. But today, Spain, a track that I quite enjoy, but a track that is very difficult to get right. So first of all, we pick up the, the business from the previous episode and we pick up from a season break. We have an upgrade complete for the brake discs and we're going to go ahead and do another one and add to the one that we already got. So hopefully for the next race, we should have a double upgrade on the way. To go with that, we have also a chassis department event and it's in regards to some sponsor investment. And basically a team sponsor thinks it's actually better for us to do a front nose cone structure upgrade and spend 975 points on one of those. So pretty much it doesn't, you know, change progress too much I don't mind so we will go ahead and accept it because it's also it doesn't make much of a difference for us to be honest so I'm happy to accept it and move on with it so we're going to go ahead and agree to that now the issue is the original upgrade that we got at the start of the video has failed so a couple of days later that happened I had to repurchase it um, at a zero percent failure chance but it does mean the upgrade will no longer arrive in time for the Spanish Grand Prix so pretty much this weekend on the car it should be a major in, uh, brake upgrade for the chassis that's different on this car. The weather forecast is dry all weekend long and the R&D chart you can see that upgrade that we've got for the brakes means we take a step forward and get a bit closer to Red Bull and Mercedes. Now with that said we jump with the practice and my goodness me I had a bit of an interesting practice session I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, little spinnerino there, little Mazda spin, little spinal, whatever you want to call it, in turn three. And then later on, during the practice programs, I was doing my outlap. And as I was about to start the lap, I had another one out of the final chicane and spun into the pit lane entry. Um, so, yeah, a, a bit of an interesting start to the weekend. After practice, though, we did eventually um, succeed in all of our practice programs. And yeah, we're going to jump into qualifying and see if we can have a decent weekend because I feel like the one lap pace in qualifying has not been on point lately. Um, the race has been good, but the qualifying has let me down. So I need to try and turn that around and improve. And I believe we're yet to see Q3 yet this season. So you join me midway through my lap in Q1 here, heading through turn nine. And I just have a bit of a moment as we get massively sideways and pretty much lose all the momentum on the back straight. I've got a Red Bull behind, I believe Sergio Perez currently on a lap as well so i'm partly holding him up but also partly not because you know i am also on a lap so i'm making our way into the final few corners here of sector three and we're going to end this first lap which to be fair for the most part it was a decent lap i was really happy with it so uh besides that one mistake there's not a lot more in this realistically right now but we only go p10 at the time uh, we split the alpines and we set a high oh sorry i think a 13 zero from what on my monitor uh, but as we jump towards the end of qualifying, we're currently P15 and we need to improve. We're only safe by a tenth, so we had to go out, burn up another set of fresh softs and go again. So here we go for the second lap. DRS wide open on the pit straight. Down towards turn one, you want to try and spot the braking. About the 100 meter board is a reference, more or less in our unusual cars. With these cars now with the upgrades and the brake upgrade, more like 80 meters, 75 meters, but still... Uh, through one two and three nicely hooked up nice and clean turn four breaking just before the shadow under the bridge down to fifth and then short shifting out of there keeping it nice and tight with the white line then downhill left easy to look up a left front nice and smooth on traction exit then into the left right seven and eight where we had a bit of an issue last time this time we have a bit of an issue again they're snapping the back end then turn nine this time will we get it clean not quite I'm still struggling with car balance, we do find a bit of time, but we're only just under a tenth up right now as we go into the hairpin and we've lost a bit of time there. So at the minute, the lap isn't what we need. And we're currently P17 now and in the knockout zone. So we need a big end to the lap here as we head through the final three corners. I'm giving it absolutely everything. I actually overcook it and overdrive the car running a bit wide through that chicane. And in the end, we're only gonna improve by half a tenth as we run across the line is it going to be enough to move us out of a surprise Q1 exit? And the answer is no, we're out and we're done. 
a 13-0 qualifying done for us. Now, there is a reason for this. Um, I feel like it's worth explaining. So as the cars get faster and faster in my team, this happens on every F1 game. It has been the case for the last three or four years now. The one lap pace of the AI gets stronger and I'm less and less able to compete. But in the race, it usually goes the other way and I'm stronger. So that's kind of going to be the pattern, unfortunately, um, I think heading forward over the entire season. And um, yeah, it, just, it is what it is. My one lap pace isn't great anyways, but it doesn't help that with the developments that AI are getting faster and faster over one lap on Saturday. Um, but it just means we have to turn it around in the race. as simple as that. So P17, not what I had in mind, but that's if we're qualifying. We're now going to move into the race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Bottas, Lando Norris and Ricardo, Rosberg, Leclerc, Sainz and Lance Stroll, Vettel, Russell, Pierre Gasly and Ocon, Sonoda, Giovinazzi, Martinez and Nobuharu Matsushita, Mick Schumacher, Latifi, Lundgaard and Nikita Mazepin. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Well, again, we have another scenario on our hands where, you know, we're up against it. We had a pretty bad qualifying and we need to turn it around in the race. Now, to be honest with you, this is looking pretty good for us. I'm going to be honest. I know Spain in terms of how the strategy works, how the races tend to go. And P17 isn't a terrible thing for us. If we can make up a few places and, you know, make progress on the alternate strategy again, this is the way to go. The one stop is much stronger. And unless the AR can do a softer hard tire strategy, we're going to be benefiting and gaining quite a few places here today as the one stop is far more effective than our two stop around here. So fuel wise, we're going to run 0.8. Um, to be fair, I don't think fuel is going to be a massive factor in this race. Um, neither is the weather, so it's going to be pretty much dry all the way through. And yeah, we're going to jump into it and see what happens. The car is working well. I don't know what happened in qualifying. I just really struggled to get a lap together which is something i also had an issue with in practice but the car does feel good it's really really weird to explain either way i want to try and break you know this pattern hopefully starting from the next race we can try to qualify a bit better but anyway we're going to jump into the race turn this around get to the points and move on to the next one so let's jump into it right let's jump into it everyone in mediums so equal tire status for everybody five lights and run away quick five lights good start actually good reaction time i'm gonna go straight over to the inside to cover that off we've got matsushita challenging on the left into turn one we go side by side with the alpha as we now go through turn two and now into turn three we'll have the inside line which is better as you can see sonoda under steering a bit wide now down towards turn four i thought about going up the inside of giovanazzi there but we'll just try to get sonoda for now Still on the outside now as we head down towards turn five. I'm going to try and get Giovinazzi here using the momentum and the clear track. Side by side, down to the next left-hander into the chicane. It's close, it's tight, but we're going to get it done and get ahead of the Alpha. As we now head through turn nine, both Alpines understeering a bit wider with dirty air. Ocon goes defensive and I'm kind of boxed in here as Giovinazzi comes back at me into the hairpin. I'm going to have to try and fight back which we do manage to achieve. That was a bit scary. But we've moved up to P15, so we've gained the place. Let's try and pass Ocon here. I wonder if we can have a little look into turn one, if I can just nail this final part of the lap here and get the traction that I need out of it. Not too shabby. I think we may have a chance here. Here we go, in the rule tracks. Using up all the ERS, but struggling to make a difference on the straight. We're going to have a look around the outside. It's very tight. Still side by side as we now head into turn three. Surely not. We'll keep pushing though. Inside for four. Ocon goes in very shallow. We bumped tyres a couple of times, but we've gone through and made the overtake stick. Good scrap that. And we're now P14. Ocon back up the inside actually. I have to leave the door open. But we do manage to get ahead on the traction and on the exit. 
And we are now past the Alpine. We lost a little bit of ground to Russell, but that's okay. We'll try and make it up over the next couple of laps. But a good start to the race. Getting the elbows out early on. P14 for now. Pace isn't there right now. I'm actually a little bit surprised. I thought I'd be a little bit quicker than this. At the minute, Ocon is running with us. We've dropped Giovinazzi and the rest of the bottom teams. But right now, we're just not with it. The pace isn't there. We're losing time to Russell and Seb, who are buried deep in that DRS train. So they're just pulling away every lap. I've got to try and think of something. But at the minute, we're not there yet. Already, we've got cars in the pit lane. Charles Leclerc in for Ferrari. We set a personal best on that lap. Just starting to find a little bit of pace as we drop Ocon out of DRS range. But still nowhere near enough you know what we need in terms of pace to really make a difference here so i need to try and find something in the second half of this stint to really get my race back on track nico is just peeling off into the pits now he's in the pits bit of a shame to see that i would have hoped rosberg may have been able to one stop it but rosberg in the pits another personal best for us back to back ones now plenty of soft runners in the pit lane so we're going to move up into the top seven Gap's still not coming down though to the cars ahead. I'm losing so much on the two DRS straights. Everything I make up in the corners just vanishes, which is so frustrating. And I think the remaining soft runners are now in as we do yet another personal best. Gap's still not changing though to Russell ahead. Okay, so we've got Verstappen behind us. I think he's going to be our golden ticket here to get back into this race. So I'll let him pass me. I'm going to try my absolute hardest to try and keep up with him. He could be the reason and the way we get back into the top 10. So here we go. Let's happen fastest lap. Let's force him to use a bit of energy and force him to have to work for the overtake. Let's try and stay with him as best as I can anyway. Nope. Too fast. Can't keep up. Unfortunately, it's just not happening right now. Let's hope in the pissed up phase things change. But that front three pack, I think of Gasly, Vettel and Russell, they're just pulling and pulling and pulling every single lap. Oh, we've got a couple of Mercedes cars right behind us here, so I'm probably going to let them both go. I'm not racing them here today, so we'll let them crack on. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the hards. Lewis goes by. Bottas not too far behind, but I don't think he'll pass me here. we will have to wait a little bit longer as we will try to stick with Hamilton here and see if we can stay within DRS. Or not. Bottas is going to go for it here. Fair enough. Off you go, Valtteri, mate. What a difference. I only had DRS on the pit straight. Push now. We're boxing this lap. Literally had DRS only on the pit straight and we went 8 tenths quicker. That's how much of a difference it makes, you know, following someone. I managed to get some DRS off Bottas, but we're going to box this lap as we get our first warning for track limits. Let's try and have a strong in lap here. Right, let's box for the hard tire. This lap. I'm trying to tackle the pit entry here. Just pushing flat out. Give it everything into the pit entry. Nice. Very good. Russell, the last car on the alt strat to pit. So the front three, Verstappen, Hamilton and Bottas will continue. We actually hold Russell a little bit in the pit box there, which is great timing for us. Let's see where we rejoin then. We need a quick stop here. And it's not fast. 2.9. Not what we wanted. Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit. We'll receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross over into the track. Oh, that's so slow. Right behind Lance Stroll, who's on a set of mediums. Not sure if he's yet to pit or not. Let's try and stay within a second. Oh, tires are cold, but we've got 5.7 seconds over Ocon, so Ocon's lost a load of time. Got to Seb 4.3, so it's pretty much the same as before the pit stops happen, so we haven't lost anything to Seb going to try and stay within a second of stroll which could be key here but i don't think i've got the pace to do it it's going to be difficult i need to nail this chicane i think stroll's two stopping and i think he's just stopped but we have held on so there we go drs which is crucial for us well right now we are catching the three cars ahead on the same strategy currently they're stuck behind the ferrari i'm using stroll to drag me along this is exactly what they did in the first in and that's what we're doing now to get back into this race Gap to Seb 3.5. At some point, I'll pass Stroll and I'll try to get the mega slingshot on the on the pit straight to gain like a full second, hopefully, in terms of overall pace, if I can time it right. But this is working well for us right now. Charles Leclerc pits. Right, well, in that case, we're going to go for it. On Stroll here, it might be time to pass. 
going to go to the outside. We bang wheels with Lance, but I'm going to commit to that move and make it stick. We need to push on. Gap to said 3.4. Let's see if we have any pace to try and get in the second time around. Personal best. We've dropped Stroll to one second, but look at the Delta on the straight. I, I'm losing the time again. It's happening again. I don't think I can catch up to these three. Unfortunately, I just can't make it happen. We lost it on lap two, battling with Ocon, and I've not been able to get back close enough. It's amazing how it's cost me my race, pretty much. Nico has come into the pits. He's in the pit lane now. So Rosberg in for the second time, and I'm guessing a few others probably will be as well. Maybe it could be the two stoppers our way back in. If we can work with the two stoppers, Rosberg, maybe we might be able to work with him. He should be catching us up on mediums. Uh, Stroll in the pit lane as well. Rosberg should be the next car behind us once he rejoins. So yeah, maybe we can work with Rosberg to make something happen in this race. Because right now you can see I'm just losing everything that I make up on the straight. I managed to get within three seconds, under three seconds at the final corner, but now it's up to 3.4. Yellow flag. Someone's had an issue further back. Rosberg is absolutely flying. Some information on Sonoda. They're retiring from the race. So you can send it out the race as Lando Norris pits. I think to be fair, Lando might actually split me and Rosberg here, which is not ideal, but again, we can use Lando to get back into this race. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Perez in the pit lane for Red Bull. He's gonna be just ahead of us though. We've got Lungard just in front on the blue flags. Let's see how this works out. We need Christian to get out of the way, please. Hopefully he gets to one side out of turn three. Lando, in the meantime, closing up here. There goes Lungard. Nicely out of the way. Thank you, mate. Perez could be key here. When he tries to cut his way through the three cars ahead, he might cost them a bit of time. Now, before I let Lando go, I'm going to try and back him into Rosberg a little bit. That's my second one for track limits now, so I've got to be careful. But yeah, I'm going to try and back Lando into Rosberg and see if we get any luck. Here he comes, Lando, though. He's going to try and pass me into the hairpin. I'm going to fight back up the inside on the brakes. Late, late lunge, but keeping it clean, making the apex. Come on, Rosberg, we need you to get involved, son. It's your time to shine, pal. I may unleash them both here and see if Rosberg can have a run into turn one. That might be the play, to be fair. Let's see. Where's Rosberg? No, he's nowhere in it. We're going to have to try and force Lando here into a move. I can't go for it. I'm going to let Rosberg go. I don't want to waste any of his time. He's on a faster time, better strategy. Just let him stick with Lando. So a P10, turn into the points. Now, Ricardo could be a threat, so I need to try my hardest to stick with these two. I'm trying hard in my absolute tits off right now. Pushing as hard as I can. To stay within a second of Rosberg and I'm just about able to hang on at the minute and I keep DRS. We set a personal best by four tenths, 14-0. But I am really struggling. I don't think this snap is I'm gonna be able to hang on anymore. As I've not even gained anything on that straight, so I don't think I'll be able to keep pace unless Rosberg goes for a bit of a look and forces Lando into a defensive move. Maybe they lose a bit of time. It's gonna be very difficult for me to keep up. But we're a flyer right now. Let's keep the pace up. And there we go, we've dropped out of range. I don't have it anymore. Another personal best, but this hasn't happened. Rosberg getting pretty close to Lander, but again, he just can't quite make the move stick. I can see all the cars up the road. It's going to be a race of what ifs. You know, we're just a little bit too far off the pace and a little bit not close enough this race, just a bit too far away. But P5, P4, it's just up the road. Rosberg and Lander have caught up to the train of cars. Hopefully they keep losing time, but I need to try and get myself onto the back of that. You can see there a massive train all the way through the front chicane. Hopefully now they stop pulling away from me every single lap and I can try to claw some of that back. I'm running out of energy though. The gap was 1.7 seconds at the final corner on the last lap. But the AI have gone ape shit and gone flat out with their engine mode now and they've absolutely dropped me again. So no response from me. We're going to just have to sell for P10 today. The pace just was not there for once in the race, which is quite surprising. I really thought the race pace, as always, would be better. Verstappen wins it. Both Mercs in close proximity. And here we go through the final chicane for the final time to pick up a single point. And that is going to change the course of the championship a little bit. 
heading into Monaco. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Brilliant stuff from Red Bull today. What a superb victory. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to every one of the team. Well, after that race, it wasn't to be, but still both cars in the points, which is a small positive. Uh, we do move up from P17 to P10 in the race, whereas Rosberg drops from P7 to P9. But if you look at the one stop, you know, strategy, Russell, Gasly, Vettel, that's kind of where I wanted to be, but we lost too much time battling Ocon on lap two, and that cost us because we could have finished P4 this afternoon. So it just goes to show small margins make a big difference in Formula One, and at the end of it, we finish in P10. So there's the top 10. And your rundown, missing out the points, we have Ricardo, Leclerc, Ocon, Stroll, Sainz, Latifi, Matsushita, Schumacher, Giovinazzi, Mazepin, Lungard, and Snowda out of the race. Now, elsewhere, if we look at the standings, after three rounds, we are down to fourth place. We actually lose, I believe, four places in this race. We go from first down to fourth as Hamilton, Bottas, and Verstappen overtake us. Elsewhere, Rosberg, P12 with five points to his name and quite a few changes here in the midfield, but we remain in the top four. Constructors, down to third. Red Bull overtake us here today. Of course, both their cars in the top, uh, I believe in the top seven, top seven, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Mercedes lead the weight and we're eight points ahead of Aston Martin right now. So yeah, we're still chilling. We're still hanging up there, but I'd love to try and turn that around. Hopefully Rosberg can try and string a good race together and actually finish higher than where he qualifies for once. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it, guys. So for the race, we're now going to move into upgrades. You're no longer in the top spot. Are you hoping to regain it? I hope so. But, you know, we'll take it one race at a time. Um, it'll keep the season interesting for sure. Why do you think you weren't as quick as your teammate today? Uh, I don't know, it's tricky to say. I've been lacking pace all weekend, but I just think Rosberg deserved the result today more than me. Your teammate seems to be having a hard time pushing past the competition this season, don't they? Well, I mean, you have to ask him that question, but definitely, I think, from the perspective of a team owner, um, it's not looking great, but then again, um, the competition this year is really, really, really strong. You scraped the walls a few times. Were you struggling for grip? No, not really. Appreciate your time. Well, after the race, it's going to be three points apiece between myself and Sergio Perez. So not too bad considering the lack of pace. We actually do some pretty good damage limitation as Perez is now three points clear. In terms of a claim, no changes really. Um, very, 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 very minimal and marginal gains at this stage. And then in terms of cash payouts, our sponsors should give us a full amount, I believe, because we've got top 10 and interviews done. Elsewhere, damages, let's have a look to see what the issue is this weekend. Looks like 1.5k on Rosberg, which is absolutely nothing. So yeah, good weekend all round. And we start to once again build up that cash pot and the amount of money we have. Now back in the office, first of all, activities. We've got a couple of days until the next race weekend. So we'll go ahead and take care of those. So first of all, we'll go for a GeForce training to improve Rosberg's overall pace. We'll then go for a chassis equipment upgrade. And the last one will be a chassis team building. We're going to skip the interview as well. I'm not really feeling it. We just did one as well. So I don't feel like I want to give more answers or more insight, to be honest, at this stage. So 1,600 points to spend. I feel like we can work on the aerodynamics a little bit, to be honest. So looking at the prices, I'd love to go for this front end uh, plate lower, but we don't have any discounts on that right now. We've got a 12% discount on this uh, rear wing upgrade right now. And then we've got Okay, this one, this is not too bad actually, a cheap one, a minor one, uh, 713 points, we'll go for that. That won't make too much of a dent in terms of the finances. 
And then I think we're gonna keep the rest of the cash in case we have any failures or anything go wrong. So that's that done. We can now move into the next race at Monaco. Now, before we do, we've got a quick department event for the powertrain. So let's jump into it. Facility flooding. The recent extreme weather has breached the team's HQ floor defenses and we have minor flooding in some areas of the facility. Some of the equipment's been damaged, but it's hard to tell how much. Now, every way for the equipment to fail before purchasing replacement will lose momentum every time it happens. But if we're proactive and purchase replacements now for all the at-risk equipment, we're more able to react quickly to future failures. But it's going to cost a lot more today, so how do you want to handle it? Now, we've got the safe solution and that's going to put 100k in the bank or a cheap solution is gonna cost us a thousand resource points, which is quite a hit. So I'm gonna say, go for the safe solution, we'll go for the replacement and take the financial hit instead. And there we go then, job done. We're now ready for round four at Monaco. I'm looking forward to it. Monaco should be fun. I think we've got potential there to have a good car and pick up a good result and some decent points. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, as always, smash the like button. Let's try and break over 1,200 likes on today's episode. Subscribe for more daily F1 content and my team, which of course is now over every other day on the channel pretty much. So one day yes, one day no. As always, a massive shout out goes to the channel members. And finally, check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them. But that is it from me here today and I'll see all of you next time.